Um, hopefully you guys have seen, if you've been following us on social media, you would have seen that. We were invited by Ambassador Cruise Lines to go on board their newest ship, Ambition. Um, so we were only on board for one night, um, but basically we sailed from Belfast and we went to Liverpool. Uh, we were delayed in departing just because the weather was really bad crossing the Irish Sea. Um, so we did have a very bumpy crossing. Um, now, that's obviously nothing that Stuart Ambassador, that's just kind of what um, crossing the ocean is. So we had a late disembarkation, which, to be honest, for me was great. So I didn't have to get up at 7.30 in the morning to leave my cabin. We kind of had a really lazy day. Um, we were allowed to stay in our cabins until 11 a.m. And then we arrived into Liverpool just before 11. So it was really lovely to kind of pull into Liverpool. I don't recall ever sailing into Liverpool either. I've never cruised into Liverpool. Um, so that was really, really lovely. But the main point of this video today, or this live today anyway, is to kind of share with you guys a little bit more about Ambassador Cruise Lines. Um, now, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them and I will bring them up on the screen. There is a feature here where I can bring any questions on screen. I don't fully understand how it works, I'll be honest. Um, I believe it brings up YouTube and Facebook comments. So if you have a question on um, what it is about Ambassador or anything you hear today, then by all means, feel free to answer any questions you've got and I will do my best to answer them. Now, this video isn't going to be a full-on tour. I'm not going to go into every single space on board. I am planning to do a um, ship vid a tour video separate to this, um, just kind of talking about the different venues and the bars on board, but it will definitely give you a good overview about who Ambassador are and what they have to offer. Now, I'm just going to start Start off with a few pictures um, of kind of mixed things just to talk about who Ambassador are and from our time on board. Now, Ambassador currently have two cruise ships. So they have um, Ambience and they have Ambition. Now, I've been on both of these ships. I went on Ambience for a half day ship visit and now I've been on Ambition um, overnight as well doing a um, one night cruise. Now, these ambassadors specialize in XUK, we call them in the industry. So these are cruise lines departing from the UK. Now, they do have a couple of places you can embark outside, but that's generally part of a world cruise. The majority of their sailings will be XUK. So primarily, you'll have Ambient sailing from London Tilbury, and they'll have Ambassador um, Ambition, sorry, which will be sailing primarily from Liverpool, but she also does regional departures as well. I've got a full list, but it's usually Dundee, Newcastle, Bristol, Belfast, they're the four I can always remember, but there are other ports as well that you can board Ambition if you wanted to and get a regional departure. At the end of the video, I will be doing some offers so you can kind of just see some of the prices for it, um, but also just some of the itineraries they do offer. But they do have some fantastic itineraries, whether it's British Isles or going off to the Norwegian Fjords or going further afield as well. But there's also some great mini cruises in there as well. So again, for those of you who've never cruised before with any cruise line and you kind of just want to put your feet into the ground, this is going to be a fantastic entry level cruise for you to try that. Now, the one thing to point out as well with Ambassador is they have purchased old ships. So if you are somebody who loves kind of the latest features of facilities, then definitely kind of Ambassador is not going to be the cruise line for you, but don't underestimate how charming their ships are. They have definitely done a fantastic job of kind of taking over ships that have either recently been renovated or they renovated them themselves, kind of those public spaces to give them that kind of Ambassador charm um, that they are slowly growing. And as kind of they are getting more fleets um, ships in their fleet as well, they're adding a lot more character to their ships as well. Now, is that somebody messaging me, telling me I'm doing something wrong? No, cool. Okay, cool. So um, just having a look. So there's the two ships in the fleet. Like I mentioned, primarily like 98% of their sailings are going to be ex-UK to part from the UK. They are primarily adult only as well. So they aim themselves at the adult only market. And they do have a couple of multi-gen sailings. So if you are somebody who wants to take the kids away from you, then you can in the summer months. So usually the summer holidays, they have a limited number of sailings that are specifically listed as being multi-gen. However, you do need to do book onto that knowing that they don't have kids clubs or kids facilities on board. They will have kids activities. So they will definitely have games and activities the kids can do on those summer multi-gen sailings. But if you are looking for a family cruise line where the kids will have kids clubs and activities and a whole kind of specialism in family entertainment, then again, Ambassador is not the right cruise for you. However, what they will be right for you is just the price and what they refer to as premium value cruising. Now, when I first came across this, I was a bit confused. I was like, how can you have premium and value in the same category? It just doesn't make sense. You're either a value cruise line or a premium cruise line. Now, this is kind of a happy blur in the line. And when you see the price point again on the offers at the end, you'll see exactly what they mean by value. The price per night is incredible. You can get some fantastic prices of around about 40 to 50 pounds per person per night. Now, that is obviously a full board cruise. So that's going to include your breakfast, dinner and evening meal as well in the beautiful dining rooms on board. Um, and you can get drinks packages as well for incredible prices. And again, I'll show you some prices for drinks later. But we were drinking cocktails like a Mai Tai. And again, really generous alcohol pour on a Mai Tai for six pounds a cocktail 
which even if you don't get a drinks package and you just like one or two drinks, fantastic price. It's a glass of wine was about 350, something like that. So incredibly good value um, drinks as well. Um, but also as well, the um, food on board as well is for what is available and when is available. There are limited hours that the food's available, but for what is it available, again, the quality is incredibly good. Again, considering the price you are paying um, to get on board the ship. So this is ambition. So like I say, we got on board in Belfast and you could just see another ship outside. Um, so again, the weather wasn't the greatest. Again, this is kind of British cruising. You never really know what the weather's going to be like, but don't fret. The ship does go further afield down to the Canaries as well. So you can definitely get on board and have warm weather sailing. Um, so again, you can see there now that's the um, kind of entry way where guest relations is um, really modern as well design on it. So again, even though these are older ships, they've definitely gone for kind of a bit of a timeless but a very kind of modern take on that. So it's very bright and airy and light as well with just those more timeless kind of wood finishes and wood panel finishes as well. So I think she's got a lovely bit of personality and um, Ambassador likes to refer to themselves as kind of like the warmest hug in cruise or the warmest welcome in cruising. And definitely that's how it feels. It's very kind of relaxed as well on board, um, very casual. So you're not kind of dealing with very kind of formal or traditional cruising. It's very relaxed um, cruising on board. And again, um, again, imagine the sky is beautiful and sunny, but again, they've got really lovely pool deck as well. So the Lido deck as well with the kind of lovely spa reclining pool there as well. So you can kind of see the what you would normally find in thermal spas where you're going to have those little um, seating areas to sit into as well. And then you've got kind of um, the jets as well that will ov obviously offer those um what are they called? They're like water massage, the hydro massage, that's the word. Um, so you've got that facility in this pool, then there's another pool further back, which you can just see in this picture on the side there, slightly smaller. Um, and there was another pool that I found as we were disembarking as well, but all the water was drained again because we had that really rough crossing with, I think it was like 45 knot winds crossing the Irish Sea. So they drained all the pools and closed them all down so we couldn't use them. Um, but again, the weather wasn't great, so we wouldn't have, but it was really glorious and sunny when we got into Liverpool at least. Um, again, so as I mentioned, it is a full board cruise, so all your meals will be included. Now, you've got a number of options throughout the daytime. They had, and the picture cuts off um, at the top, but they did have a Lido style um, like buffet station where you get burgers and pizzas, things like that. Again, the hours are limited. It'll go in, if you go around the ship and check the daily planner, which I think I've got a copy of somewhere, it'll tell you the hours that that's available, but also then you've got the borough market as well. Now, it is a small buffet but you are going to have a range of choice. Like I had a really lovely um, chicken tikka masala, which again was absolutely lovely, but there's loads of options for salads, burgers. Um, you know, there was gooch, um, fish goujons and chips and things like that if you wanted a light bite. Um, again, your tea and coffee will be included as well during kind of uh, meal service hours. So you can get an, um, tea and coffee as much as you wanted to. Loads of dessert options. So if you're somebody who wants to have like a lighter bite and get some kind of fruit and salad and things like that, then definitely that's all available to you. Um, it's just not the biggest buffet, but again, this is a really small ship. I don't have to hand, sorry, the figures. I did have them last night when I was re um, refreshing my memory. Um, but it is, this is the smallest ship I've ever sailed on anyway. And before this, it was Disney Magic, which was about 2,700. So I believe she's in about the 2,200 off the top of my head capacity at full occupancy as well. So again, not a particularly large ship, which offers its charm as well then because you've got a small ship cruising experience. Um, and it does allow you then to kind of get into some of the ports that some of the larger ships aren't going to be able to get into. And again, there's me in my favorite place on board any cruise ship, which is the lounges. And there are a number of lounges on board the ship as well. My favorite was the Cavern, which had a very kind of um, Liverpool, obviously, because um, the main port, I wouldn't quite call her a home port because she does um, shop around. But one of her main ports um, of um, embarkation and disembarkation will be Liverpool. So the Cavern after the famous Beatles bar as well. Um, really lovely lounge as well at the, um, on the kind of the middle of the ship. Deck 8 it was off the top of my head. Um, so really lovely cocktails. Again, espresso martini for six pounds amazing value you can't knock it um and then they had a lovely wine bar on board as well called the purple turtle as well which was outside the theater so kind of if you wanted to get your pre and post theater show drinks you could totally do that as well um and then there was another one, i think it was the pen dennis was another one which was the late night bar which is where we ended up obviously because late night drinking is what we do um there's loads of bars type of things so whether you want a small kind of cozy bar or the big open lounges where they kind of usually would have live music and live entertainment then you can do that nightlife wise the majority of the the venues do close around about 11 or 12 so she's not going to be a late night party ship at least from what i saw on board i'm sure there may be one or two parties on board on other nights but definitely for our night which for the sailing we were on people who were embarking in belfast it was night one but for people who were disembarking in liverpool it was the end of their cruise again so usually last nights of cruises 
tend to be a bit quieter because obviously they know people have to get up early the next day to get off. So it could have just been a scheduling choice for the night that we were on board the ship. Um, but yeah, there was late night bars available. I think the bar was still open by about one o'clock when I decided to go bed. Um, the, 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 the late bar and I, the cruise lines do this. They say open till late. <laughs> so yeah, it's just open until the last person gets kicked out or they, um, the crew decide they want to go bed basically. Now, this is really small. I do apologize. I'll make it full screen now. But this is just an example of the bar menu on board. So you can either watch this on replay and screenshot it or have a little look around it. But again, we are working to get this on my website and also my friends over at Cruising for All as well. Um, I believe they're going to put it on their website soon as well. Um, but you can find this as well on the Ambassador website as well. Um, so definitely hunt that down. But you can just see on there as well. Um, you've got mocktails on there if you are somebody who doesn't drink alcohol. And they're around about the three to four pounds territory. What the little circles represent the different drinks packages as well um so you can have the non-alcoholic drink package if you wanted to so if you somebody wanted like the fizzy drinks package um or soft drinks mocktails or then you've also then got the uh what's it called the explore package so again you can book this at the time of your cruise and add this on sometimes it's discounted sometimes it's packaged in it obviously all depends on kind of what promotions are running at the time but you can just get an idea there of kind of how much drinks are there so shots of tequila if you're that crazy um four pounds 25 we were drinking so i'm a rum drinker and you can see there, every single rum cocktail was six pounds each, basically. But they can also be included on the drinks package. From my memory, drinks package is anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds, I believe, off the top of my head. If anyone wants to know for sure, message me and I will double check exactly what it was. But because we were only on for one night, we didn't get the drinks package. Um, but again, a great range of um, options for you as well there if you are somebody who does like to enjoy a tipple when you're drink when you're on board. And again, the main dining room as well. There is speciality dining on board. We didn't get to sample it. So I'm not going to really talk too much about main dining. Change back to that one. Um, so I'm not going to talk about speciality, sorry. Again, I think Saffron, which is the Indian main dining room, was about £20. I think it's 17 off the top of my head um, per person as well, if you wanted to do that. There is another one as well called Chef's Table, which was £90 per person per um, seating as well. Um, so there's a range of speciality options on board as well if you did want to elevate your meal. But the one thing I will say, again, bear in mind this is, and this is where the value or the premium value element comes into it. For the price you are paying to get on board this ship, the food standard is incredibly high. When I did my ship visit on Ambition last year, that was the one thing that resonated with me the most during that ship visit was just how modern and fresh the spaces look on board, but equally as well, the quality of the food on board as well. So I had... Um, I had seafood ceviche as well for my starter. So again, you're not getting kind of your cookie cutter mass produced food. That's what it is. It is obviously, um, uh, what's the word, express food because they're doing mass catering. But you're not getting kind of generic food either. The quality of it was amazing. So this was um, lamb with um, ratatouille as well, which again, the ratatouille was amazing. I don't normally like ratatouille, but really flavorful, really rich food as well. Perfectly um, cooked um, bit of lamb as well on board. And then now I ordered what I thought was the triple chocolate dessert. I'm not convinced that that's what turned up, <laughs> um, but that's my dessert that I had. So I think it should be the triple chocolate um, dessert, but I don't think that's what it actually was because I only saw one chocolate and a mousse um, but again really lovely and again really light as well the portions aren't massive um but what is there is in, I, again i can't stress how good the food is on board ambassador if you definitely are somebody who enjoys your food um then definitely um you want to check that out and have a little um don't 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 go on board sorry thinking you're going to get bad quality food because i know some cruise lines in the value category have bad reputation for their food, but the food on board Ambassador is definitely a highlight for, again, a value cruise product. Um, do you have to have a look now? So I can show these, so there we go. Um, yes, they are. Didn't No, so one of the Mai Tais we had towards the end of the night, somebody in our party did complain. They thought that it was a little bit watered down. Um, I did as well, but again, I was going with the mindset of I had a six pounds drink. Um, what I will say is different bars seem to pour better than others. So certain cocktails in some lounges were better poured than in other lounges, but that's obviously just a waiter problem. That's not um, anything to do with kind of is it bad or anything like that. It's just um, down to the waiter serving it ultimately. So I had one bad Mai Tai out of I checked our bar tab the other night, but I must have equally had, <laughs> had somewhere between 12 and 15 drinks in the time that we were on board. Um, and I had one. I wouldn't quite call it bad. It just wasn't as strong as the others I had on board. Um, so, yeah, 
it wasn't that bad. So hello, Lindsay. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you for commenting. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think it was watered down or the quality was bad. Um, you definitely get a generous pour. I don't think the, the, the drink service wasn't an issue either again. So I don't feel like they're skimping on drinks type of thing. And that's why they're so cheap, not at all. Oh, that's my last image. I thought I had more images than that. Um, I will hopefully be doing um, a ship tour. I did film footage to do a ship tour. However, I'm going to put my hand up and say I still haven't done a ship tour from when I was on the Conning's Dam in May. <laughs> so um, I, I, I'm I, not the best at getting content out, unfortunately. I find this content is much um, easier for me to do and I enjoy this type of stuff more where I'm sharing kind of either experiences as kind of a bit of a live more than kind of sitting down and editing a full together um, tour. But I do have a cabin tour coming out. Speaking of the cabin, um, we were offered an inside cabin. Normally, personally, I don't book an inside. Um, those of you who maybe know us a little bit better and know kind of the type of travel that we specialize in, we do specialize more in premium travel. I'm very much one of those people that recommend people kind of go ocean view or up. Obviously, it's a personal preference. I'm not going to stop anyone booking an inside cabin, but just the way we personally travel is kind of a balcony or ocean view up, as I like to say. And we tend to cruise on premium cruise lines as well, like Virgin Voyages and Royal Caribbean. But I would say, again, a heavily prefacing for how much you pay to get on board Ambassador Cruise Lines. It doesn't feel like a cheap cruise line. It definitely is in the value category, and there are certain things that are very value about it. But I don't feel like I've gone on board and I've gone, wow, this is a cheap cruise line, and it feels like I'm in a cheap experience. The cruise is lovely. So definitely, I will share some content of definitely a ship tour. I just don't know how um, detailed that ship tour is going to be because it's a small ship, so it's quite easy for me to tackle. So hopefully, I'll get that video out sooner rather than later so you can just see. And I'll share some on kind of our Instagram and Facebook page as well so you can kind of see some of the more public spaces. I think if you follow me on Thread, the new um, social media app, I did share first impressions on there as well of kind of just some of the spaces on board. So definitely check me out on Thread under Magical Traveler. Just plug in that because it's new and it's a lot of fun. Um, I did share some pictures of some of the, the public space on board as well. I haven't shared any from Am Ambience, which is really naughty of me, but just it came at a time when I was really busy and I haven't had time to go through those pictures and do anything with them. But this trip has inspired me to kind of get that content out. So I'm hoping within the next week or two, I'll have a photo tour of all the public spaces on board and then hopefully a video tour of our time on Ambition as well. If I had to pick a preference, I actually think Ambience is a slightly nicer ship. She's a little bit bigger and she feels a little bit more modern. Um, she's got a lovely um, like nightclub lounge space on the top of the ship that's kind of above the bridge. So apparently the captain can hear the nightclub ha um, going off every night. Um, but I feel like she's just got a few more nicer, larger lounges and nicer spaces. Um, but swings and roundabouts ultimately of what you're looking for those regional departures can't be underestimated um so i do also have so if you give me a second to pull them up i do have a couple of offers and again this is just to show you just what the type of itineraries they're offering and the price points you're getting into as well so this is the current offer at the moment so you can get up to 50 percent off on the late market um oh these are tiny sorry so i'll post these on facebook on my instagram after this now as well so if you want to hunt them down you can see them so you can't see the prices very well um, but you can just see there now as well. So really great offer at the moment to get onboard credit as well. So if you don't want the drinks package, 300 pounds, if you're not a heavy drinker, will definitely last you, you know, a five, six, seven night sailing if you're not a big drinker like us. Um, but there you can see there's a British Isle sailing, 10 nights, um, twin cabin from 1399 per person or solo in a single cabin. They do sell a lot of singles as well on board and they do have really good rates every now and then. Um, so a single cabin again for that 10 night sailing British Isles on the 19th of July this year is going to be um, 19... I can't see the last two figures. 1939, I believe. Um, so again, really great rates as well on that. In fact, let me open this on another screen. Sorry, let me open this PDF. And if anybody wants this emailed, send me a private message and I'll email you these offers so you can see them in details. Or like I say, I'll share them on Instagram in a second. Um, so there's that one. The next one, and I think this one's a really cool one, and we're actually debating whether to do this one, is the Christmas Voyage. Um, so again, this is sailing on Ambience from London Tilbury. And again, five nights sailing, 10th of December, doing the German Christmas markets, twin cabin from four, five, nine per person, or solo rate on that one is seven, six, nine per person. There's another one as well, 14 nights festive, festive market getaway, 17th of December, twin cabin starting from 359. So again, that's going to be the inside cabin price. Um, so if you are somebody who wants to kind of look at a balcony, then obviously the price is going to go higher and they do have a number of suites available on board as well. So if you're interested in suites as well, you can do that. And then Christmas and New Year voyage, if you want to be away over Christmas and New Year, 16 night voyage as well, starting from 1539 per person. Um, so again, they are without the drinks package, they are cruise only fare, but again, you are going to get up to £300 on board credit on some of these voyages as well. 
Um, next up then we have, and again, just to show you the range of itineraries as well and how incredible some of these are. So again, then you have the highlights of Brazil and West Indies adventure. Again, departed from London Tilbury on Ambition, the ship that we've just done. 42 nights sailing in a twin cabin sharing from 2939 per person, which is incredible value for money again or if you're somebody who wants to go as a solo sailor again and go by yourself 4049 pounds again for that on a 42 night sailing do the highlights of brazil and the west indies they've got some fantastic itineraries and this is what they're going to be really strong at is those people who don't want to fly but want to go to the really amazing destinations from the uk as well then obviously you have to talk about grand tour um, grand voyage world tour cruise and um, world sailing cruises sorry so again 120 nights on board this is ambience as well so again like i say i think ambience is my favorite of the two ships but 120 nights departing the 6th of january on a grand round the world cruise twin cabin starting from 7999 per person so eight thousand pounds just shy of a pound per person for 120 nights on board doing a world cruise as well or again the single cabin price on that is going to be 12,000 uh, sorry 13,679 per person and then again you can obviously join all the different legs from that so the first leg is going to be Tilbury all the way through to Auckland that's 44 nights again so that starts at 3319 right the way through then as well so you can then do Tilbury to Sydney Tilbury to Singapore which is 65 nights Tilbury to Cape Town so you can go to South Africa that's 90 nights that's going to be 6939 pounds starting price on that one or you can then join at Auckland and go back to Tilbury which is um, 60, uh, 76 nights, Sydney to Tilbury, which is going to be 16 nights, Sydney to Tilbury, um, or Singapore to Tilbury, 55 nights, Cape Town to Tilbury, that's going to be 30 nights as well. So again, you can either do the individual legs or the full world tour on that one as well if you wanted to. Uh, next up then as well, we've got the Canary. So again, if you're somebody who wants to do kind of that, this is kind of, is, there, is this their winter sun? Yeah, this is their winter sun cruise as well. So if you are somebody who wants to get kind of that winter sun cruise and you want to go away for a longer time, 32 nights on board. Again, this is incredible. 32 nights on board for £1,899 per person. Again, incredible price. Obviously, drinks packages are extra on board. But again, great, great value cruises, great prices. And again, that Christmas sailing appears here again. So the Christmas cruise is heading down to the Canaries then. Um, so Canaries are med sailing 16 nights over Christmas, departure the 21st of December on Ambience. 1539 per person which again crazy crazy value prices and this is what they're getting at as well and the, the quality of the food is is good definitely as far as best as good as any main dining room i've ever been in and um, the buffet again loads of choice for how small the buffet is on board again really really love that and again just to quickly touch upon i'm not going to go into as much detail but just to touch in a few of the regional departures as well so again ambition again british isles cruise from bristol our hometown so if you are somebody close to bristol some great great prices here again then so you kind of have the iberian and north africa escape 12 nights um departing from bristol i need to check where she gets back to because i don't think these are round i think sometimes they go from bristol and then end in um tilbury usually um but they will offer a coach service as well then back to bristol or any of the regional hubs if you do want to book on and then obviously get back to your your local hub as well um but a big one to point out as well the winter jingle seacation is a two-night sailing departed from bristol this is technically a repositioning so join at bristol get off at tilbury two nights on board prices starting from 199 pounds per person on the 10th of november you can then if you wanted to stay on the ship and the date doesn't match up. Oh, sorry, here we go. So you can do it from Bristol and do the full sailing as well. So 16 nights then, the Norway's Land of the Northern Lights on the 10th of November, starting at Bristol. And that one starts at £1,369 per person, again, for a 16 night sailing, starting in Bristol. I believe that one does end in Tilbury again, um, but going off and exploring the Northern Lights as well in that lead up to Christmas. And again, just a few examples then. Similar concept. I'm not going to go into the full prices again. Ask if you want to see them. But again, so you've got prices there from Liverpool. So again, join the ship in Liverpool. Again, I need to check whether she, they, these all end in Liverpool. They may or may not. Sorry, I don't know. But again, you can add that coach on. And I think I've seen prices of like 30, 40 pounds for that coach then from Tilbury back to the, the your embarkation port. If you need to get back to Liverpool afterwards, that can all be added on at the time you book. Um, next up then, Newcastle departures. Again, so you've got um, departure of Newcastle um so there's a couple of example prices they have more sailings than this but this is just obviously what they're trying to promote at the moment which will be the late season so again you've got some fantastic prices there um, embarking from newcastle so again that arctic voyage and land of midnight sun 12 night voyage on the 17th of june so that's past actually so you can't do that <laughs> but as an example you could have done that and that was starting at 699 per person um, for two sharing as well 
Um, and then up next then Dundee, sorry, I should be changing this one instead. Up next then you've got Dundee. And again, this one's probably changed as well. Sorry, they haven't updated these offers when I grabbed them. But as an example, again, that 12 night voyage starting in Dundee, 699 per person, or you've got a seven night Scottish Islands and highlights of the of the, of the four oars for 569 per person again as well. So fantastic. And solo rate on that one is 859. So again, solo rate, that's less than 50% solo supplement on that one again. Um, so really fantastic value on these sailings. Falmouth as well is a really popular embarkation port for them as well. So you've got some options from um, Falmouth. These are correct. These are up to date. Sorry. So again, British Isles this September, uh, September next year, actually, 11 nights, September 24th um, for 989 per person and a twin as well doing British Isles or Jewels of the Mediterranean, 17 nights sailing going this September for £1,479. Again, the prices are absolutely crazy for what this is. And again, Belfast, again, is going to be another big port for them as well. So people in Northern Ireland, if you are interested in, again, going on a cruise. And we had a lot of people embark in Belfast um, on our sailing as well. But again, some fantastic sailings. Any of these now, there's one, though, the one we were on. So technically, we joined the first leg of this Belfast sailing. So you can see this. So the sailing we were doing is going on then to do Iceland. Um, so again, 11 night Iceland sailing. So you could have joined either in Belfast or in Liverpool, again, was another turnaround port for them. So that sailing starting from in the inside cabin we were in from five eight five, um, from sorry 859 for 11 nights, which is crazy. Again, I haven't done the maths, but if we do it, I'm pretty sure that's going to be close to the 40, 50 pounds per night. So 859 divided by 11. 78 pounds per night per person basically to have that again that's included in all your meals breakfast dinner and lunch and it also includes your evening entertainment and all the onboard entertainment as well there was tv on demand um, our tv didn't work in our cabin and to be honest by the time we realized it was just too late in the night for us to fix it but there was on demand movies you can watch um, i get the impression that they were chargeable and the only reason why i know that is because where we were delayed getting into liverpool by a good five five six hours the following day um, the cruise director said that they would include complimentary movies on the on-demand for us if we wanted to. Um, obviously, because we were only on board for a limited time, we just decided to head out and explore the ship type of thing. Um, but there is on-demand. If you want to do much of filming in your cabin, you can totally do that as well. Um, but again, really smart features. What's really cool as well is despite the fact that this is an old ship, um, she does have a lot of uh, modern um, commodities on board as well. So if you wanted to kind of go up to the giant touchscreens and you can see the whole schedule of the ship, I do have a video of that somewhere that I'll share some at some point. Um, but you can totally like on, say, Princess, for example, they've got the touchscreens where you can kind of see the entertainment schedule, what time the main dining room's open. Even if you want to find your cabin as well, you can put your cabin number in and hit find my cabin. It'll show you where on the ship um, your cabin is. All those features are available, but also equally on the app as well. It's not an official app. It's kind of very similar to how PO do it. And um, if you connect to the Wi-Fi and connect to the network as well, then you can um, go into the app, the website online. And you can, again, you can see all this information on your app as well. There was a messaging service on board. Um, the app as well. I don't think it's very good because if you have to be logged into the app to see the messages, you have to know to go there to get them. So if you're trying to connect with people, it may not be the best if you're a bit more tech savvy, but if you're an infrequent um, internet user, again, there is a really good kind of way you can on your mobile device, at least anyway, see the schedule. But equally, if you are old school and you want a physical copy, they definitely do post a um, physical schedule in your cabin every night. There was one on our bed on our arrival, but equally then as well, they posted the following days twice because <laughs> it all changed. Obviously, we were originally meant to be getting into Liverpool at seven in the morning. So we would have got the schedule based on the normal daytime. But then, and I was impressed actually, before we actually went to bed after a meal, there was another schedule posted through our door, which had the updated schedule, given in the fact that there was extra entertainment put on during the daytime to keep us um, entertained whilst we were late to getting into Liverpool. So I thought that was just really, really nice that they were that quick in getting that schedule updated and changed over. Um, so yeah, guys, unless you've got any other questions, feel free to ask any questions. I know this is a very kind of top level tour of kind of what Ambassador is about, um, just because I wanted to kind of do this quickly whilst we just got off the ship to share kind of our thoughts with you on what we thought about Ambassador. Definitely, like I say, it's not my go-to market. My go-to market would be the um, premium cruise lines, but I would very confidently um, recommend this to customers if they were interested in going on board the quality of the food the cabin was really lovely i know some of the cabins are a little bit dated in decor choices just because again these are old ships um, but that doesn't mean that the facilities aren't great like we had a really lovely shower um, clean bed in, really comfy bed in. The pillows weren't to my personal preference, but I'm sure if I was on board for longer, I could have asked my stateroom host for more pillows or other pillows if they were available. Just by the time I noticed again, we were going to bed at one in the morning. The last thing I was going to do at one in the morning was ring guest services for better pillows. Um, so I slept 
just um, I would have preferred more pillows, but that's again easily remedied with kind of just me ringing guest services. Um, and again, that's a preference rather than a problem. Um, so yeah, really lovely cabin. I again wouldn't choose um, on a longer sailing to stay in an inside cabin for again for a one night preview sailing. It's perfectly fine. We have done an inside cabin on Virgin Voyages on a three night sailing. Again, didn't have a problem with that. Just I prefer um, to go in a balcony just because I like sitting on my balcony on those days where you're sailing at sea. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in booking or learning a bit more, feel free to drop us an email or a message. Um, you can find us online anywhere at magical-traveler.com. That's our website. And again, hopefully I will have content on there in the next week or two. Phil's working on his gluten-free guide to Ambassador because Phil is gluten-free. So obviously I can probably get rid of this now so you can see me. Hello. Um, so Phil will be sharing his gluten-free guide as well and his dining guide to Ambassador. And then I will do um, kind of a ship tour, cabin tour. And possibly either I will or Sarah will post as well then on cruising for all the bar menus and the speciality menus as well. So you can kind of see them on online as well. Whichever we do, we will link to each other as well. So you can see each other's content on our websites. If you are interested, again, you can check us out. My email is kieran at magical-traveler.com. And I don't have a card for this. Um, but if you ever wanted to send a WhatsApp message, um, sorry, I cannot multitask. Um, so seven, three, two, seven. Here we go. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, if you ever wanted to call us, um, there is our number as well. So you can WhatsApp us anytime. Um, 07307 60 20 30. I should remember. It's really easy. Um, you can WhatsApp us anytime. Ask any questions, however random. I love a good random question. Um, or if you're interested in booking, you can also call us on that number. WhatsApp us anytime as well. More than happy to do that. I know loads of customers. They even WhatsApp me when they're away, sending me things like, here's the menu. What do you think of it? Um, so never be afraid to WhatsApp anytime you've got any questions. Um, and equally, on also social media if you're not watching us on facebook if you want to find us on facebook instagram thread which is new um or tiktok under magical trvlr you'll be able to find us as well and i share you know, random musings that i have of cruise ships pictures from whenever on board cruise ships and if you want to just join in and ask any questions on those platforms as well you're more than welcome to um also as well just a quick plug as well to my partners in podcast i don't know if you guys know but we do have a regular weekly cruise podcast and um, you can hunt it down on your podcast app of choice under magically cruising cruise podcast um and we do have a weekly podcast our most recent episode what do we talk about sun princess was our most recent episode um so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about sun princess you're going to hunt down magically cruising cruise podcast um and i work with the guys over at cruising for all as well so sarah is my partner in pod um, and we just love talking ship each week um so we've got loads of content on there as well so royal caribbean ncl msc we will be doing one on this trip as well together on the podcast in the coming weeks as well so keep an eye out for that as well um we have loads of content there's a review of piano avia as well we've done on there with cruise loads and laura as well um so if you're interested in learning about avia maybe in sitting with piano then definitely hunt that episode down and they're also available on youtube as well so if you prefer to watch things in visual format there's no kind of overlays you don't get to see cutaways of the ships but you can kind of see just myself sarah and any of our guests that we have on board talking with each other as well um so you can hunt us down on youtube as well and we are on that under magically cruising cruise podcast as well other than that guys if you haven't got any more questions and thank you um lindsay as well for that question that was really nice of you but if anyone's got any other questions about um ambassador i will quickly sip my coffee and you could add them if not then i will end this live and i'll see you on the next one sorry i was desperate for that <laughs> Oh, no, thank you guys. Thank you both. And again, if you guys haven't seen Sweet Nature, they were on board Resilient Lady with us as well in, it feels like ages ago, doesn't it? When were we on? We were in, in May, weren't we? Uh, we were on Resilient Lady at the same time in May, so I had a lovely time chatting to them briefly on board. But they've got loads of content on their channel as well about Resilient Lady. Um, so if you want to have a little look at their stuff, feel free to have a look over and see what they've got. They've got some really great content. They found a space I've never found on board the ship as well. So you found, I can't remember the name of it, but you found that really lovely quiet room on Resilient Lady as well. Um, so I didn't know where that was. And you found that, and I've never seen it. I've been on the ship load. So well done for hunting that down. But yeah, definitely check those guys out. They've got loads of content on their channel as well. And they also are on social media under the same name as well, Sweet Nature. So if you want to find them out and hunt down their content, feel free to give them a follow.
Other than that, guys, thanks for that. Hope you've enjoyed it. I don't know what next week's episode is going to be about yet. If there's any cruise lines you want to hear more about or any product you want to hear more about, um, drop me a private message or chat in the chat below and let me know what you'd like to see me talk more about. I can obviously fill an hour <laughs> on pretty much any ship out there. Um, so if there's a particular cruise line you want to hear a little bit more about, I'm more than happy to kind of put together a little bit one of these overviews about what it's like to sail with any particular brand. Other than that, guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy the slightly muggy, rainy day that we're having, and I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye. This is the awkward part now where I got to work out, turn it off and not look uncomfortable.